On paper, the Storm is a serious achievement in terms of what you get for your money. Running down the specification sheet, you'll find it very hard to do better for just £200. After the almost faultless Swift though, a fair few niggles start to make themselves known following some use. Wiley Fox were so close to pulling off an excellent 1-2 with this pair of phones. I really wanted the Storm to follow on as well as the Swift, however after some use, this larger phone doesn't quite feel the same. You don't expect much in the design stakes when you get flagship specs for 200 notes, so the Storm actually surprises with a well-balanced construction. The 5.5 inch screen makes for a phone that will be large to most. Ignoring that many simply may not like the size, we can focus on the build. Wiley Fox have a screen protector applied during manufacturing. This is a nice touch, however I've spotted more than one storm where this is a bit cocked off to one side or bubbled up down the screen's edge, spoiling the thoughtful extra. For a phone of this size, the weight is also decent at 155 grams, and the balance in the hand is good, with no tipping points or top heaviness. All of the ports and buttons are in the right places, headphone jack on top, micro USB to the bottom, power and volume on the right edge nearer the top than the centre. The backplate on the Storm has the same sandstone effect as the Swift, a dark grey colour with a tactile finish that helps avoid scratches and stains. The cute Wiley Fox logo is also embedded alongside orange highlights for text and camera trim. The Storm has capacitive buttons on the bezel, a la Samsung Galaxy. These take the place of the software buttons within the Android Cyanogen installation, although can be disabled if you prefer to use the Android buttons. The capacitive buttons are a nice touch in theory, as they provide a bit more screen real estate, however in practice they've not been implemented particularly well. They light up, albeit a bit dimly, yet the responsiveness and feedback for them is quite poor, with the vibration response set very low. I hunted around in the settings to improve the feedback strength and possibly change the brightness levels, but unfortunately this appeared to be the one thing in Cyanogen's Android customization that can't be amended. I also checked a couple of the other Storm units to make sure I didn't have a dud one. They were all the same. Overall, there's not much to fault with the Storm's construction. Aside from those slightly lacklustre capacitive buttons, the Storm appears to be constructed well. On the specification sheet, you'll find the Storm boasting an impressive 20 megapixel sensor, which according to Wiley Fox is the Sony Exmor IMX220. Sony haven't used this model in the Xperia range since the Z1, Z2 back in 2013-14, so it's an excellent low budget choice as it received great reviews back then. Paired with the Qualcomm 615 chip, this hardware processing will be sound, but of course this is only half the story. We also have to contend with the software processing, which is where cameras on budget phones often slip compared to flagships. The default auto mode makes use of the full 20 megapixels at a 4 to 3 ratio. This creates decent enough images for the casual user, although there's still a fair amount of noise and some aliasing issues for those with a more discerning eye. There's plenty of options available in the Cyanogen camera app, with dozens of preset scene options available as well as the now expected HDR mode. On testing, the HDR algorithms cause wildly differing results, sometimes completely ruining an image, whilst on other occasions sorting out the lighting and truly helping to pick out detail. I'm not sure whether to blame the camera, the processor, or just the scene and the subjects for some of the poor HDR results I experienced. The settings do highlight that most of the available megapixel resolutions are only available in 4 to 3 aspect ratio as well. You can't get any type of widescreen option until you drop to 8.8 .8 megapixels, which is still fairly high. I'm not bashing the camera, and overall I'm actually quite impressed. Given that this is hardware that was effectively top of the range one to two generations ago, the performance remains very good. As always, results depend a lot on the user and your subjects. The right conditions can make for some lovely images. When it comes to overall performance, the Storm doesn't get out of this review unscathed. For the most part, the interface is smooth and fluid, yet some issues become apparent after continued use. A few times I've noticed lag and locking up. Considering this is meant to be the more powerful of the two Wiley Fox phones, it is a little frustrating, especially when my personal Swift has been buttery smooth for over a month now. Looking into the settings, the Cyanogen builds are different, so a direct comparison perhaps isn't fair. However, a little blame has to land somewhere. With a major brand like Samsung or Sony, you know they have their own teams working on the firmware every day, so you know where to point the finger. With a small team like Wiley Fox, it's possible the entire software side of things was outsourced. Cyanogen OS is designed to be taken off the shelf, so to speak. So it's also possible it was installed without anyone really looking in depth too much and just trusting the product. There are some minor Wiley Fox customizations though, which hints that somewhere down the line, someone's had a fiddle in the stock software. Whatever the reasons, I've noticed a couple of incremental Cyanogen updates hit the storm this first month, and they have improved the experience. So whether Wiley Fox have had a direct hand in this or not, the phone is being supported to some degree. 
the battery is frustratingly erratic. At 2,500 milliamps, it's not small, but also not that big either, and the cell was never going to get it into the two-day parade. Yet sometimes it would be nice if it could just make it to 6 o'clock when we went away from power all day. Usage patterns will of course vary between users, yet it's hard to recommend the Storm for a serious power user based on this experience. If your screen is on regularly, then you'll need to be close to a charger or plugged in regularly at work or in the car to keep topped up throughout the day. Again, this could be software based and as I mentioned in the Swift review, take a look at the screen brightness and some of the Cyanogen customization options to eke out more juice from the phone. The default settings definitely aren't geared towards the power conscious. I won't go deep into the extras that the Cyanogen operating system offers. If you're interested in knowing more, check out the second half of our written Swift review for a breakdown of the options that are available. The modular themes engine and navigation options, plus added applications and privacy features are also present in the Storm. These do add value to the Storm in a way that other manufacturers' Android customizations often don't. There's a lot to dive into with the Cyanogen system once you get past the initial home screens. As a result, the already impressive £200 price tag becomes even better if you're the kind of person who enjoys tinkering. On paper, the Storm is incredible. Just as they did with the Swift, Wiley Fox have managed to fill a phone with a silly amount of tech and features for the price they're asking. Of course, a nimble newbie in the industry can afford to exist with few overheads, tiny marketing costs and thin profit margins, so it's no surprise we're seeing more of these types of small companies appear. The manufacturing is of course outsourced, and it's here that the Storm shows a few rough edges. The Swift got away with the basic look by virtue of being so cheap. The Storm raises expectations slightly when it hits the £200 mark. The lack of responsiveness in the capacitive keys, relatively poor battery life and misapplication of some of those screen protectors hints at a rushed manufacturing run for a phone that may not have been thoroughly tested. It still works pretty well though, and for what it's worth, you can do a lot worse for your money. If you're in the market for a large, affordable phone, then definitely put the Storm on your list. It's not the instant buy of the budget range I consider the Swift to be, however, it's still well worth consideration.